considered using Facebook ads for your business or are you using them but not getting the ROI you really want? Uh, well, stay tuned as our ver- we've got the very expert for you today um, who'll get you up to speed and help you succeed uh, with Facebook ads. So, Emer, it's a very happy Friday, or should I say a happy National Tea Day? Are you a tea? Oh. Are you a tea? A tea gal, Emer? Oh no, 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 no! It's it's coffee all the way. You were coffee, aren't you? We, we yeah, yeah. Coffee. Although I'm, I'm a bit of, um, I'm a cheap date if that makes sense, because uh, I don't go for all those fancy coffees. Um, yeah, you do, Mister T. Ah, there, Mister T on Tea Day. You know, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I wonder, does our guest drink tea or coffee? Um, that would be you, an interesting you, one. You know. Are you? Uh, be, be, we're going to keep your identity secret. Uh, <laughs> Although everyone can see him. <laughs> special guest. <laughs> Do you like tea or coffee, John? I'm so I'm a coffee guy. Um, Yay! And, <laughs> we're, we're but right but so I've got an espresso maker, and uh, so every every morning I make a, a latte for for my wife and I. So wow. it's a little bit on the. Mm. It's not it's not like your your straight coffee. And so I don't know if, no. if you're much of a, a, a milk in your coffee drink. Oh, yeah. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like No, no. Bl- black. Black. <laughs> really? <laughs> no milk, Emer, or sugar. I oh, my God. Taste, I want to taste the coffee bean. So. That is actually, I'm shocked because like, I know you so long and I've just got the. Yeah, you, no you, milk you don't really your... know me at all, do you? No. <laughs> no, I don't. That's No. I'm shocked now. <laughs> and listen, for everyone on the radio, they want to know who our guest is, Eva. So fire ahead. Okay, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Fire ahead. Like away, away with the fairies today. Yeah. Well, it's Friday, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, we are with the world's most well-known, Ooh. renowned, uh, oh, we're going to big him up here, ad yeah. strategist for Facebook ads, uh, John Loomer. Um, yeah. John Loomer started his business when he was five in 2011 with wow. the goal of helping other businesses max their social media with a difference. Um, I must get a few pointers off him today. <laughs> 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 and he's become recognized as one of the world's leading experts, as I said, when it comes to Facebook ads, because there is a mind field with Facebook ads, as you know, Philip, Absolutely. because they keep changing things in the yeah. dashboard. And one day yeah. you look for it and then you go, that's gone. Yeah. You know, so welcome le- to Let's Get Social, John Loomer. And I hope you've got some answers for us. <laughs> uh, well, thank thank you so much, Emer and Philip. No, it's uh, um, it, but the fact that it changes so much, honestly, I don't like that. Allows me to keep, it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing because it's, Doesn't it, it didn't change. <laughs> Does not wreck your head. <laughs> uh, well, look, it's just become part of my routine that I need to keep up on what's mm. going on, but. I mean, the reality is that no one, no one would need me if uh, yeah. it was easy and yeah. everything stayed yeah, the chain, stayed course. the same. So, yeah, true, it's very true. true. Well, the great news as well, if you are listening, obviously on the radio, it's John is going to be with us for two shows. So make sure you mm-hmm. tune in next week for part two of the show, where John is going to give us more tips and insights into the Facebook ads. And certainly, if you've missed any of the previous shows of the Let's Get Social show, check them out on the podcast on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, and of course, on the Dublin South FM website. And if video is your thing, which is slowly becoming mine, she says, dragging her heels, but we won't go there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah, John's great on video, so you definitely have to follow him um, on his channels um, because you get to see what he's talking about as well. Um, Yeah, you can go and check us out on YouTube on the Let's Get Social Show channel where you can ring that bell so you don't miss John or anyone else that comes along. And uh, subscribe and leave us a comment because we, whatever your topic is, we um, comment topic, whatever, we could turn that into a show and we'll even give you a shout out. So what's not to like? So, uh, yeah, give us a check out on YouTube. Absolutely. Please do. And uh, yes, John is a whiz on the video. Uh, becoming a TikTok mm. legend, Ooh. John. So, oh, uh, so so we're loving it. We're, we're loving that. We're, uh, I've just recently kind of got onto TikTok and uh, yeah. You're, you're well, constantly popping up, so uh, so yeah, that's that's good. I mean, it's it's funny because uh, I've only been doing this uh, the video stuff for six months. I mean, I I got involved in YouTube over the years, but I was never committed mm. to it. Mm. Um, and and really, I got completely away from video for the most part over the last several years. Mm. Uh, but it be, 
and I resisted short form video for, I think probably because of the way most of us who aren't using it, perceive it as Mm. for the kids. It's yeah. dancing, yeah. you know, yeah. s- silly dances or and kickboxing, trends, kicking hands, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever your thing. Yeah. And I was like, ah, there's no, there's no place for me there. And, but I think the, the reality was it's also just intimidating to yeah. start something new and you don't know how to mm. do it. And, and you really put yourself out there, you know, with yeah. video as opposed to anything else. Mm. But it, it kind of became painfully obvious to me that I had to get started. So six months ago now. I, is it I only six months? Because it, it yeah. feels like you've been with us forever. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it, I, 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 I set the date as when I put out a video that basically mm-hmm. said, "This is going to suck, and that's okay." Because it's like that's when I mm-hmm. embraced the fact that I was going to create some really bad videos, and then maybe uh, that's throughout my the, angle. But it, hello, everyone. Honestly, this yeah, is going to be absolutely horrendous, but you know. <laughs> Well, yeah, when, just go for it, you know? when you're doing something new, like we have so many, so many of those things mentally that hold us back from doing it because of that mm. fear. And yeah, I think it, it really wasn't until I embraced that, that mm. you can't just make something good the first time. Or if you're worrying so much about it being good, it's going to take you too long to do it. You just have to create it and no one's going to yeah. watch it anyway. Like the first, how, how many videos you create, no one's going to see it anyway. Mm. Um, so yeah, and then the month of October there, I, I created 70 videos. Wow. Uh, but it was painful. It was hard. Like yeah. I, like I had no process yet. And really it's you didn't have to you worry know. about the hair or makeup, the baseball hat, you know. Exactly. You know. That's that's part of it there. But <laughs> it, so it, it's been quite the journey yeah. um to to actually be like, oh yeah, video is my thing, which you know, six months ago it definitely was not. Yeah. Well, you've definitely embraced us and they're great. You know, they're yeah. short, insightful snippets, which is just I like the perfect. way you just get yeah. straight to the point, straight you know, where point, a lot of yeah. people, do, they go around the houses and wait till the end till like, I give you, yep. yeah. wait till the end. Exactly. Not- well, Amber, let's get straight to the point and back <laughs> on with the questions, yeah. Okay, yeah. tell me now, tell me now, John. <laughs> go, um, go first. <laughs> okay. Is Facebook advertising still af- as effective, you know, with all that's going on between TikTok and bits and pieces and everything else? You know, what, what's your core key um, advice there on that? Well, it, it's still effective. Now, I think the, the difference is these days compared to six, seven, eight years ago, um, it was just so much cheaper to do it mm-hmm. uh, in, the, in the past. So you could make the argument really that it was for everybody and yet you would get decent results, at least acceptable results. Mm-hmm. And um, the threshold wasn't crazy, crazy high in terms of, you know, uh, how good your ad needed to be in order to be effective, uh, mm-hmm. just because the cost to reach people was was so, so much lower. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so that's the first thing. But these days, yes, it's gotten harder. It's gotten harder for tracking because uh, of all the iOS privacy stuff that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but along those lines, Facebook's also come out with new tools and a new focus, especially over the last couple of years. And it's it especially benefits e-com businesses. So if you're an e-com, it's mm-hmm. absolutely still for Essential. you. Essential, yeah. Um, yes. And, and really their entire model is catered to you. Um, for everybody else, it doesn't mean there's not a place for you. It mm-hmm. just means that um, it's harder than it used to be and you have to know what you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. There are also also times where I would say, you know, uh, for the vast majority of your marketing or ads budget, it may make more sense to be on Google or something else. So like some of these like service companies where it's like you only need them when you need them. I always use the example of a plumber. Uh, I don't know why you'd spend a ton of money with face on Facebook ads if if you're a plumber when really would only be about awareness because you can't really target people who mm-hmm. need you yeah. on Facebook. Whereas on Google you can because people are like I need a plumber find help me find this uh, yeah. you know expert. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know there are those challenges involved, but um, I would say that yes, it's still. Everyone can and probably should use it at least a little bit. It's just a matter of how much and realizing the challenges um, that are going to be there. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's, it's a great point because I think, certainly in my experience, 
the advertising is definitely still working, but there's still quite a lot of testing that has to be done. Um, testing whether carousel ads work, uh, different audience targeting, um, images, video, times of the day, even, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's just, uh, but I have definitely noticed that it's not as cheap as it used to be. Um, but certainly from and, in what way have you noticed that Philip like is it just like you have to spend more money did you find or yeah like like yeah like the the budgeting has certainly has in, increased to sort of start mm. to see more traction uh, and engagement of what I've seen um, from maybe a few years back but I think that's just a natural progression you know I think like you were saying John between the iOS updates and all the various sort of privacy issues and data restrictions and all of this mess is going through so many different changes and mm -hmm. sure we've seen with the ads platform uh, ads manager itself constantly changing the interface constantly changing so no doubt you know it's going to continually evolve you know and just like you were saying you know if it didn't change you know mm. maybe you know services for facebook advertisers wouldn't be there because it would just stay the status quo and um, based on your experience john mm -hmm. like a lot of our listeners would tend to be you know, small, medium enterprises, businesses who maybe want to take their Facebook advertising maybe to that that next level. Um, they've been happy to maybe tip along with maybe a really kind of small budget. Maybe it might even be fifty dollars, fifty euro a month sure. or whatever. Um, it, do you kind of when you look at say for success with Facebook advertising, do you have a sort of a a process whereby bedding down almost like a little Facebook strategy, as in really know your target audience, drilling down on your offer and being very clear as to who you're trying to reach and your messaging. Is that something that you sort of, you kind of, you, you see as being kind of critical for, for Facebook ad success? Yes. Um, I, I think one thing though has changed in that, that is, and this has been an evolution for me as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, even within the last couple of years, I was doing doing this where my focus was always on you know, how can I kind of slice and dice this audience mm -hmm. to, to reach my ideal people um, with the message, whether it's remarketing um, or, you know, even sometimes with, with interests and finding the right groups of people and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you could do some really powerful things with that. Like I, I would create funnels with it where it's like you saw this one ad you engaged with it then you'd see this other ad and you engage with it see this other ad mm. but the problem is first of all as you shrink the audience it gets mm. more expensive mm. and you start throwing them into an uh an ad series that's a lot of money to show them th through each one mm. and um so something that was r ridiculously profitable at one time um because it was so relevant suddenly isn't quite as effective as it used to be. So, to, you know, as, I'm, as we're talking about, you know, reaching your ideal audience, I think the focus for that is largely in, I think you're kind of heading this direction is, is in the messaging, really the messaging and creative mm -hmm. now and understanding who it's for, because truthfully, the algorithm learns from that. And it's, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, what's, what's in the copy and who's engaging with that copy you can't make that copy just, you know, something that should appeal to anybody and everyone necessarily. You yeah. want to reach your ideal people. Mm. Um, so that has become more important than say a few years ago, where it's like all the weight was on you to like isolate who the, that target audience is, put that into your targeting. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, they'll they'll respond to whatever my messaging and creative are. Yeah. Um, now it's like you're you're going to be broader in your targeting. Sometimes you have no choice because mm -hmm. the way the targeting works now, uh, whether it's Facebook removing interest target, a lot of the interest targeting, or um, uh, executing some of these uh, expansion tools that automatically expands your audience. So now, yeah, the the creative and and uh, copy are much more important than they used to be. Mm. Yeah, that you was really that was some. Get, you have to get that um sort of as you would say, you know, you want to get them hook them in on the first moment that they read, say the caption or have mm. click the video or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and, you know, you, can, you can't, as you say there, you can't, you know, appeal to everybody. You have to kind of think of who your ideal customer is. And, you know, that's one thing I, when I'm working with someone, I go, right, okay, who's your ideal customer? And they kind of go, well, it could be, and I say, okay, you got to think of, you know, him. Mm. He's, uh, he's just over 49. He's got gray hair. Uh, he's into <laughs> social Don't media marketing. Don't tell me that you know, John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think, you know, and then they're kind of going, yeah, but how am I supposed to get, then you've got to think of what's his pain point and blah, blah, blah. Right, right. So um, I was going to say, you know, I have people that would say to me, oh, well, well, if I press the boost button, you know, on the, um, on the, like a, a maybe a, a Facebook post that's done really well. And they go, yeah, but that's a bit like, I, I use the analogy, and I don't know if you would say this is sort of like on the money when you hear it, is like you're standing at the, you know, outside, a, you know, a, a bar or a, a hotel, and you've got a mm-hmm. hundred euro coins or a hundred dollar coins. You don't have dollar coins, do you? Right. Okay. Well, you know, and we, we, um, we, we do, we do have dollar coins. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So you have a hundred of them, John. That, that's a big, <laughs> big bag of coins there. <laughs> that is, you that throw, is. You throw all the coins out into the car park. You're yeah. not going to get everybody to see all your coins because some of them gone under cars and they've gone in hedges. You right. know, some of them have gone down the drain, no pun intended. So w- what I was going to say is, is boosting a good, technique sometimes or is it more you know uh strategic to create a facebook ad for an effective route for them to do face you know advertising on facebook right right so look um i think this also goes back to what uh, philip was asking too about low budgets Mm. Um, because typically that's going to be the people who will be boosting um Mm a post to be uh, with the lower budget. Mm. I would first say, no matter what you're doing with a low budget, uh, have reasonable expectations Mm -hmm. because you're not going to make a significant impact with $50, 50 euros in a month. Um, You just aren't. And uh, so you have to have- So what would you say is a good barometer then? Well, first of all, you should be thinking about, okay, what is the one thing I want to accomplish with my ads? Uh, Because- Typically, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook says that they need between 25 and 50 of that optimized event per week per ad set to exit the learning phase and get you optimal results. And that's just kind of like a, mm-hmm. a rule of thumb. It's not used uh, as, a, as a hard, fast rule necessarily, but that's mm-hmm. just something to think about. Like if your goal is to get sales, you're not going to get 25 to 50 sales by spending 50 euro in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're just not. And that doesn't mean you can't get some sales, but it's just like you got to start thinking about, you know, what is it that I can optimize for that'll get me volume mm. with that mm. money? Um, uh, because truthfully, if you spend 50 euro in a month, you're probably not going to get a single sale from that. Yeah. Um, so was that worth your money or could you use it to build leads instead mm-hmm. um, that, that would make more sense. Or even if it's just an awareness play, especially for local businesses, awareness mm-hmm. is fine too. Like, especially like restaurants and things like that, mm-hmm. uh, where it's like just introducing yourself to the local area. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes that's hard to measure and, and you just have mm-hmm. to embrace that. But to get back to your question about the boost button, I mean, the boost button has gotten better over the years. The, the initial yeah, issue, has, yeah. the initial issue in the very beginning was that it just didn't have any customization in there. There were so many things you couldn't do that you probably mm. needed to do, whether it was optimizing for a conversion or, or you know, uh, be, uh, isolating your your targeting or or some mm. of those things. It, it's still a good, decent um, entry point. Which is really the 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 whole goal for Facebook really having a boost button in the first place was mm. um, making it as easy as possible for brands who are overwhelmed by it to get mm. started with advertising. Yeah. Uh, now, should you boost, you know, stick with boosting forever? That shouldn't be your goal. Like, uh, mm. and the reason for that. Even now, and most people don't realize, like when you hit boost, you are creating a campaign. You just don't really realize it. It's it's one mm-hmm. campaign, one ad set, one ad, 
Um, but if you were to say go into ads manager, you just have far more control and more options. So whereas with the boost, it has to be of an existing post. Mm -hmm. Within Ads Manager, you could create individual ads uh, yeah. and and try different things with different creative, different copy. Mm -hmm. You could try different ad sets where, in some cases, you're optimizing for a purchase. Sometimes you're optimizing for for something for a lead or something else. Um, you could target different audiences and different ad sets. Mm -hmm. Split testing, so you just have lots more power and control. Um, within ads manager as opposed to the boost. But mm -hmm. then again, if you're spending 50 euro a month or, or yeah. something lower, um, yeah. the boost is usually going to be fine because you you shouldn't be creating a whole bunch of variations um, mm -hmm. if that's your kind of budget because you're going to water down your results. Yeah. yeah no so thinks, uh, anything under 100. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think typically I'd, I'd say that um, I think my content, I when, I when I try to think of who my ideal audience is, usually someone who's uh, part of an agency or marketing for others, mm -hmm. and they're spending at least a couple thousand dollars per month, which mm -hmm. may sound like a lot to to some businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, 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 usually you're not going to be thinking a whole lot about a lot of the things that I talk about when it comes mm -hmm. to like super advanced uh, tips. Like they just aren't that useful if if you've got a lower budget mm -hmm. um in some of those cases just hitting so it's, that it's boost a, button might so be for fine. anyone out there that actually is a bit hesitant about doing facebook ads try the boost button oh yeah mm -hmm. well it, because out. truthfully if you just jumped into ads manager um and that's going to be the first thing you did and you're already kind of unsure about this you're going to be overwhelmed and you're probably going to mm -hmm. give up uh mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a lot there. It's confusing. Mm. Um, and I think most of the time people don't know what they're, because you also have to set up your ad account. You have to set up um, your business manager and things like that. And it's just a lot. And your pixel usually is yeah. a consideration as well. Mm. Um, and you just kind of end, end up down a rabbit hole when you end up in ads manager. Mm. Um, so as long as you're fully committed to that rabbit hole and getting it all sorted out, sorted out great. But if you just yeah. want to just throw something out there, start with the boost button. That's that's a yeah. good place to start. Um, mm. You may have seen this on TikTok, John. Um, there's there's plenty of people who are on who are Facebook marketers giving their various tips, etc. Mm. And there seems to be a lot of confusion, especially among our listeners and our audience who would be business owners and SMEs, etc. About the various ad types, because you have you've got your awareness ads, and there's the traffic ads, and then you've got the lead generation sales ads. Lots of conflicting advice, as in don't bother your time with awareness or traffic. If you're going to do advertising on Facebook, this should all be lead generation. Would you be able to just give a very, I suppose, brief synopsis about some of the core ones: awareness, traffic, lead generation, and whether you feel there is there's I suppose a, a time and place where maybe a traffic ad is worthwhile as in to maybe mm. if you have a blog post, use it to drive potentially traffic to the blog and maybe bring some retargeting for a lead gen or what, what were your mm. thoughts be on, on the ad types? Yeah. So to understand, uh, I mean, first of all, there's six different objectives and this is just mm. basically telling Facebook or meta uh, what your end goal is. And then that controls some of your options in your ad set. But ultimately, um, what's most important is what you are optimizing for. So that is your the action that is going to determine success mm -hmm. um, of your campaign. And so you can optimize for a conversion. And then once you select conversion, you can select, you know, okay, what type of conversion? It could be a purchase. It could be a lead. It could be something else. And those conversions are usually measured by your pixel on your mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have events firing there or could be awareness. So in that case, if it's awareness or reach, uh, the algorithm's only goal is to have as many people see it and potentially remember your ad uh, as possible, but the, whatever actions aren't important. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can optimize for traffic. You can optimize for engagement. 
um, and engagement, just mainly being clicks on your ad, comments, likes, shares, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so all of that sounds reasonable, right? Mm-hmm. The the issue with optimizing for traffic, and when I say optimizing for traffic, there's usually one of two things you can optimize for a link click mm-hmm. or a landing page view. Difference, mm-hmm. very minor. It's just that landing page view means not only did they click the link, but because the pixels on your website, the page actually loaded, mm-hmm. um, which could take three seconds or whatever. So the problem with that is that if you're not careful and most people who are optimizing for traffic or for for a traffic type of action aren't careful because they don't understand the weaknesses, Mm. that's where the algorithm can run astray. Because you told Facebook all you care about or the primary goal is you want a link click. Mm. So what they're going to do is they're going to find the best, the cheapest way to get you the most link clicks possible. Mm. And... At, at, so at the lowest cost, the, the highest volume. And unfortunately, uh, there are, first of all, uh, whether it's bots, whether it's just uh, low quality accounts, you've also have placements that are susceptible to click fraud, to accidental clicks, mm. uh, just to low quality traffic. And that's mm. typically... Uh, audience network. So if you optimize for a link click or a landing page view, again, the algorithm doesn't care about quality of those clicks, even though you do. Mm -hmm. And so it could um, kind of without, look, I'm not going to accuse Meta of anything uh, (laughs) because this is all algorithmic as well. Mm. But if, if, if you said your goal was link clicks, it's going to find the cheapest way to send you link clicks and they're yeah. probably going to be very low, low quality is my point. Mm. Uh, but the algorithm doesn't care about the quality you do. Yeah. So what, one thing to consider with that is first of all, you, you could remove like audience network placement uh, mm. if optimizing for a traffic type of action. But I found that that doesn't really matter either. Mm. Um, and actually I did mm. some tests on this is that, yeah, okay. It's going to make it a little bit better. But still, the problem is that it's just trying to get you the lowest cost clicks, period. And what happens after that doesn't matter to the algorithm. So what you have to do is tell the algorithm what you want. And I think that's what we often forget. Like we make assumptions like, for example, if X number of people come to my my landing page, I know X percentage will convert. It's Mm -hmm. kind of this misconception of, of... like thinking that all traffic is created equal. It's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. All right. So what what I have done is I've created custom events that track things like scroll depth on a page, mm-hmm. uh, time spent on a page, whether they start my podcast player, they watch an embedded video, those kind of things. So I could tell Facebook, okay, you don't know what a quality traffic visit looks like. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what it is. Now optimize for that instead. And, and you can also track those things to see, okay, well, this is actually leading to high quality traffic. That's super advanced kind of stuff. But it's the kind it of thing is. you have to but it's the kind of <laughs> yeah. thing you have to think about yeah. that it, instead of making assumptions, because the algorithm does not care about quality. And, and these are things you don't really think about because like if you're optimizing for a purchase. Yeah. The quality doesn't really matter. It's like you got to purchase. You got to purchase, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. Yeah. So um there's not like an accidental purchase that could happen because of weaknesses in algorithm or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so you just have to be really careful not to make those kinds of assumptions, but yeah, there, there are several different ways you can optimize whether or not you can optimize for a purchase is really going to depend upon the type of volume you can mm-hmm. generate from those purchases uh, and whether, you know, the algorithms algorithm will be able to learn enough uh, mm-hmm. from the results you get to to get you profitable results um but and that's where it then becomes challenging mm. it becomes challenging if you can't optimize for a purchase then what then it's usually sh- it should be a lead or some other type of conversion if you can mm. um but again I, I think there is a place for say awareness type of ads um 
and traffic if you're careful and engagement if you're careful, but you have to be aware of some of the weaknesses in those approaches. So, and so would you say awareness is probably the safest bet when you're starting out after you've left the boost button? Um, you know, and then you're saying to yourself, okay, I go with an awareness ad, but how do people in give themselves a little bit of a, a leverage in regarding to targeting the right audience when it comes to that, you know, um, would you have a maybe, few tips on that? Maybe Maybe like, awareness, I would say it would be ideal. If you're low budget, it would be if you're a local mm. business. Yeah. Right. So if, if you're a local business and you want to just that small group of people who are mm -hmm. in a radius around your business, some sort of reach or awareness campaign yeah. would make some sense. Right. Mm. Um, you don't need to worry about target usually targeting mm -hmm. by age and gender and interest and all that kind of stuff, especially mm -hmm. like restaurants and things like that doesn't matter. No. Um, so that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, beyond that, if if you're not just a local business, I would re reach and awareness becomes a little bit more problematic because yeah, at that point, um, you know, what is your end goal? Right. So uh if you have a like so one reason I'd I'd use a reach optimization would be um I've got this small group of people who went to the landing page, added to cart, abandoned mm -hmm. it, and I want to drive them back there. So it's a it's a bit I like me this. when I go on to a certain big site that Philip has on his phone, but I go on the desktop, that one, Philip, begins the day. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you get these little Just reminders. Like <laughs> well, right. well yeah. because you know, we know we know that all those people are hyper relevant. Mm -hmm. They were on the verge of purchasing, they didn't, maybe they got distracted, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's a super small audience and target them and mm -hmm. you know that that's uh, still like a reasonable way to go. Um beyond that though, you know, reaching awareness is a, is a little bit tougher. I mean, that's normally done if if you're if you're um more when of you like mean a tougher, do you mean like it's tougher in to... terms of getting getting results that mean anything, oh, right? right? Yeah, okay. of course. So because if you're if you're using a small budget and you're not like just a local business that, that you appeal to people from around the country or around the world, mm. I don't know if awareness is really going to help you. You mm. still need some sort of action um, that you're, that you're going for. Mm -hmm. Um, you just have to be aware of the potential pitfalls. If you optimize yeah. for, for engagement, if you optimize for those traffic type of actions. Yeah. And and so when you, when you say pitfalls, what are you kind of saying? Like, it's like, if it's all low and then quality. nothing and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, like you, you, either you're creating custom events so you can track this or using URL parameters, um, which is like a, a snippet of code that you put at the end of your URL so that you mm -hmm. can then go into your Google Analytics to see, mm -hmm. okay, what are people doing once mm -hmm. they click that link? If they're doing nothing, then it hasn't been very effective. Yeah. Uh, so those are the kind of things that like just to keep an eye on because otherwise you can, you know, be kind of convinced by these results that seem really good on the mm -hmm. surface. My but ad is doing great. Do yeah, mm. no, you know, you're 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 spot on, John. Because I think there is a sort of um, there's still with a lot of say business owners who are starting with Facebook ads that the the anti gravity towards traffic ads. Great, I'm getting people to my website. I've tested this a bit like you, uh, what you, exactly what you were saying, and you can test for link clicks and you can test for landing page views. There's always a massive disparity between the figures that you see, but you're right, the link clicks could be totally crappy. It could be mm -hmm. someone then on the landing page views who clicked, literally the landing page loaded and then they went um, because you did a great video where you used Tag Manager to create those custom mm -hmm. events for scroll depth. So if someone was on your landing page for maybe 15, 20 seconds or scrolled X percentage down the page, then potentially you could see that there's an interest qualified potential lead or whatever. So I think that's really a good point for people who are listening today that just because you might see a thousand clicks on your ad, 
means nothing really because mm. you know there could have been people who just clicked by accident bot clicks or whatever and even with the landing page views if you've got 250 landing page views who's to say that the landing page loaded and that they were gone so right. i think i think you're right to dive deep down um would you believe that we are nearly finished this first uh <laughs> no first uh i know <laughs> that's um i talk a lot oh. no but like <laughs> no uh, i talk I th- a lot <laughs> i think though john that was a very very salient point that you made and i think we might in part two we continue on that conversation because i think it's a critical thing for business owners to really understand i suppose effectiveness and what ads are working and 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 how do they quantify how mm. an ad works because i think everybody gets wrapped up into oh i've got so many clicks everybody clicking yeah everybody clicking, vanity, but really, vanity metrics and all yeah that kind of but stuff. yeah um so yeah so i think this has been a fantastic yeah first first part some great insights so so thank yeah. you um yeah um so i was gonna say um if, before you go um and we're back for our next show. And um, where would you like people to go, John, and to check you out more, as they say? Well, you know, first of all, johnloomer.com is my home base. So mm-hmm. um, my blog posts and can you know, I, I offer a lot of free content. Um, mm-hmm. Starts with my yeah. blog. Obviously, mm-hmm. if, if you consume video, I am basically everywhere. So yes, you are. <laughs> if it's we can attest tic- to that, John. <laughs> yeah. If it's TikTok, if it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's YouTube Shorts now. Mm. Uh, Pinterest. I just started doing Pinterest. Oh I my god! Wow! Wow! wow. I, I hadn't touched Pinterest. You ever in go seven to bed? Years. Oh, but understand this is all. It's the same video. I'm just publishing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> repurposing. Yeah. yeah repurposing. Uh, yeah. Even LinkedIn. So. I'm I'm at John Loomer on most of these places. Facebook yeah. is uh, John Loomer Digital, but uh, yeah, it, there's a lot of free content you could start with for sure. Have you anything coming up, John? That's in terms of uh, well, so I've I actually just put out a training that is completely different than anything I've ever done, which is on short yeah. form video and getting started with short form video. Brilliant! So you can learn wow. more about that too at JohnLoomer.com. So Facebook go, ads guys. and a short form video expert. Yeah. No end to your yeah. talents, John. We'll love no, it. definitely not. Brilliant. You know. Brilliant. So um, Mr. T, as they say. Yeah, well, as they what? say, uh, well, thank you so much again, John, for your wisdom in this first part of the show. And if you're listening to this and you enjoyed today's show, you will be able to catch it again very soon on the Let's Get Social Show podcast on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, and of course, on the Dublin South FM website. And go check us out on YouTube. We're not maybe as entertaining as John, but, you know, there could be something there that might uh, float your boat. So yeah. uh, go check us out. You can see us, hear us, and John with us um, for this show and the next one. Exactly. And if you have any questions that come out of this show or any of the other shows, you can drop us an email to inquiries at dublinsouthfm.ie and maybe your suggestions could become another show on the Let's Get Social show. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, do don't go anywhere. Uh, Come back and uh, grab that coffee because it is National Tea Day, but I'm going to say coffee. And uh, we'll see you for the next show. Bye. Bye bye. Take care.